Welcome, Julio, to Fully Booked. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Okay, first questions first. Do you have a preferred pronunciation between vase or vase? Um, I I don't really. I it never occurred to me. A vase never occurred to me uh, yeah. until recently when people have some people have referred to it as uh, I want to be a vase. Uh, yeah, and I did wonder is is there a correct and an incorrect way of saying the word? I really am not the person to weigh in. I only know what's correct from me. I grew up middle class back when that existed in New York State, so I say vase. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I call it I call it yeah. base as well. I feel like base is the mainstream is, is is the mainstream pronunciation. Yeah, so that's that's my preference. So I'm gonna stick with that for the duration of our conversation. Okay, great. But like but no shame on Vaz. You know, if Vaz is where you're no, at, we, ce- at we celebrate you. We celebrate yes, you. Yes, we see you and we we love you. So <laughs> I just want to wholeheartedly congratulate you on your first children's book, I Want to Be a Vase. Um, I'm a big fan. Uh, our new children's book editor, Manaz Dar, is a big fan. She recommended your book on our last podcast. And our reviewer is a big fan. They call your book hilarious and great for stimulating creative thinking and art activities. Oh, wonderful. Now, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, you have a whole stable of fans here. Um, my press materials tell me that I Want to Be a Vase is not directly inspired by your HBO special, My Favorite Shapes, but kind of maybe sort of inspired by My Favorite Shapes. Um, how do you see the relationship between book and special? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would say they're, they're spiritually connected. Mm. Uh, they're, they're sort of cut from the same cloth, but... Um, yeah, the my 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 wonderful editor uh, reached out saying that um, they were interested in exploring adapting the special into a children's book, and 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 they brought up so if, you know people are familiar with the special they know what I'm talking about but the they brought up how how in the special I I introduced the audience to a few like cute little characters and like figurines and. Uh, a lot of a lot of the objects in the special are are toys, and how that would translate with to a children's book. But then I, I felt that the special was successful because it was unexpected and unusual to show an audience full of adults, uh, cute little characters, in the context of an HBO stand-up special that was unexpected and surprising but yeah. in the in the context of a children's book to have a children's book where the where the characters are cute little creatures is expected that is the norm right and right. so i so i thought like well what what would be unusual and what would be a a, a more true to the spirit of the special way of doing this and uh, boring household optics was the way to go. And I was very adamant about them being illustrated in the most sort of like mundane, but uncanny kind of, kind of way. Ooh, yeah. Okay. So do you want to talk more about the objects themselves right now, or do you want to talk more about the illustrations first? Uh, either, either, whatever, whatever feels fun for you. Okay. Let's go down the uh, illustration Avenue. Um, first of all, this is like an, a fantastically beautiful, colorful fantasia of a book. I mean, it's like full Lisa Frank gradation realness. <laughs> um, it really catches the eye. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm so, so happy that, that we, we, we found and collaborated with Julian Glander, who's a, uh, an animator and a, and a 3d illustrator for this book um, because it is, it, it, it does feel new and, and fresh for a book, but at the same time, I, I really do believe that it engages where, uh, with where, where kids are at in terms of what stimulates them. Right. I, 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 I found that um, a lot of children's books out there have these very like gorgeous hand-drawn almost like watercolory illustrations that are are feel more nostalgic for 
what uh what an older generation was stimulated by when they were kids yeah but uh you know what, what, what kids are consuming today it's like that they're you know they're on their ipads they're 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 watching movies so it and the the cartoons that they've come to love don't look like that and right. so i w- i wanted to do something that engaged with them at that level and presented the objects in their most true form and i and i found that julian really split the difference between art the something artistic and something banal and his way of portraying the mundane with such beauty i thought i thought was really exciting um plunger arguably the protagonist of i want to be a vase um has kind of this almost like a half a dum-dum lollipop look too like it is this everyday (laughs) object right you know like it's almost enticingly like half a dum-dum cherry lollipop like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm connecting with it in a way like you wouldn't want to lick a plunger, but this plunger is very attractive. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, as, as far as plungers go, <laughs> this is as glossy as it gets. Oh, oh, it's really, really beautiful. I wish tattoos could look the way these illustrations look. Then I would totally get a lot. Yeah, well, you know, there are some tattoos out there that I've been seeing that, that really do play with with light work Mm. uh but yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean there's something very opaque about them just because our skin is not plastic right (laughs) not yet (laughs) not yet yeah do you have a favorite illustration from the book or one that really calls to you uh i mean that sort of um very internal sequence where plunger is imagining the meadow and laying on the meadow and uh where the book really, you know, has laid the groundwork for what the real world looks like and then shows us this imagined uh, sequence. I, I, but that's definitely one of my favorite parts of the book. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. And this strikes me as a really good time to ask you, so what, what's the story here in I Want to Be a Vase? Uh, it is the story of a plunger who knows... It was, it, was, it was a very like well resolved being and is is not doesn't have any questions about themselves and knows that that in their heart of hearts they want to be a vase and uh the objects around plunger are like wait but you you're not a vase you're a you're a plunger you were made to be a plunger you have the shape of a plunger and so i i would say that the first half of the book is about plunger's uh determination to be a to be a vase and then the second half of the book i would say is about the context in which this journey happens and how that motivates other objects to be like wait i want to be this i want to be that and how as unique as plunger is we discover that actually all of the objects are are unique and they all have their own unique desires. Uh, and also it engages with a, a naysayer, which is a vacuum, a vacuum cleaner, who is like, wait, no, you, uh, you, you, you can't be that, you can't do that. And it explores also why sometimes there are people out there who are resistant to uh, the unusual or changes around them. Hmm. I having seen your comedy special and having read and reread and reread this beautiful children's book, like, are you, do you have a special affinity for epiphanies, you think? I do. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I guess because that's, <laughs> I, th- I think no one's ever brought up that before, but I, I really do. I, someone having a, a revelation is, is very enticing to me. And yeah. someone learning someone like I feel like someone breaking the mold of what they thought the world was is is very exciting to me. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really exciting to me too. It's kind of really what I'm about because I've had a very varied life where I have become, you know, I or I have served my role as a person on the earth in like much different ways than I ever w- would have could have imagined for myself when I started out. 
you know, and also like I really lacked for representation along the way. (laughs) So kind of felt very weird and outsider and icky, but still kind of marched to my own drum. And that's why I love this book so much. Yeah, yeah. It very much marches to its own drum. And I think that um, what I what I really try to aim with this book is to have it have it have it almost be a uh, an epiphany in two parts and the first mm. part being you're not wrong you're you 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 should follow what's inside of you and you should pursue what's inside of you and you should listen to what your inner self is telling you you are yeah and then the second part is look around you and see that as special as you are, everyone, everyone around you has this, is going through their own little special journey. And, and the success of you alone is wonderful. But once you achieve that, we we should, we should think about the world around us and, and, and community. And, and it's really a, um, I think to me, a response to the kind of, stories that i grew up with which which i really hold dear but they the, the, the really stress the uh the importance and power of the individual and it was always mm-hmm. it was always about a a protagonist who by determination and hard work overcame all odds yeah and then i feel like we're at a moment where we should be like well what comes after that though what comes after the princess gets to the castle, right? right. Well, now, now she should look around her and be like, why am I a princess and why are other peasants? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. It's like, Where, uh, yeah, it's like, where's the key to this castle door so I can open it up and let my friends in? Exactly, wow. exactly. Because it's like something that really would strike me about like a movie like Beauty and the Beast, right? Where... Yeah the the happy ending is she gets to live in the castle and he is now beautiful and is back to being a prince and i'm like wait but all your little optic friends are your servants now right <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> wait so now <laughs> i'm sorry you mean to tell me that now mrs pot has to wake up really early to make you breakfast every day right. and, and she's happy doing that <laughs> <laughs> like, like is there fair compensation what are the provisions for her right. retirement you know like exactly. I, I am left with questions it's i am <laughs> left with questions and i i think that the um this is just a children's book. It's not a manifesto and it's not, Mm -hmm. and it's not heavy handed and it is entertaining, but I think that it does play with those questions of, well, it's not just about succeeding within an unfair system. It's about questioning that system. Right. Exactly. Like what, what's our potential and what, if we had the time to slow down and consider if we weren't always running on the little wheel, like what mm-hmm. might, what, what mm-hmm. new futures might we imagine for ourselves and, and for our communities? Yeah. Because I mean, to be, to be perfectly honest, I, I, I have spent the bulk of my life in the hamster wheel and mm. being like, I gotta make it, I gotta make it, I gotta make it, I gotta make it. And it, and it it and it wasn't till I I stopped drowning that I started swimming and I was like looking around my, me and being like oh wait uh, there, there's people drowning everywhere <laughs> and and, yeah. and, what, and how do we drain this pool <laughs> yeah uh, how do we drain the pool yeah. Mm. And I mean, you know, like the children's book, finite number of pages. But I believe that this one kind of points towards that. One of the really lovely parts of this is that, you know, like when Plunger first says, hi, I have something to say. I want to be a vase. Like tub, toilet and sink are fairly incredulous. They're like not exactly having it. It's like this is a quote. Not Sink is like not to be rude, but look at you. You're shaped like a plunger. That's your job. That's what you were made for. And as you've said, you know, as this book kind of like opens up, you know, a a lot of these everyday objects find a little bit of their own inspiration and they imagine new futures for themselves. And like the changes, like 
it, what's one thing that's so lovely is like these objects want to participate in their environment in a new ways. And like often they're like celebratory and supportive ways. Like trash can wants to be a pillow to give comfort and perhaps audition to carry rings at a wedding one day. You know, mm-hmm. pu- puzzle wants to be of service, a plunger. Blow dryer wants to be a vacuum and ends up really helping vacuum, which brings vacuum around from this kind of like narc identity vibe to, you know, something a little bit more. You know, a, a little chiller. Vacuum, vacuum has has its own character arc. Gets gets close to it. There goes. There. Yeah, yeah. A, a vacuum is the best case scenario for your <laughs> your father <I> know. watching <laughs> uncle. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's like wait, come come here, uncle. Sit with us and 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 imagine this world with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, towards the end, plunger, you know, says I, uh, that it wasn't their choice to to be a plunger. You know, I want to be a vase. You want to be a vacuum. Isn't it nice to see everyone happy? And it's so mm-hmm. funny because, like, yes. Uh, it's like so simple. And yes, the answer is yes, yes, a thousand times, you know, for humanity. But like, we've gotten to this kind of like, the dysfunctional inequality in American society. It's like so dysfunctional that it's like, isn't it nice to see everyone happy? Like dot, dot, dot. Like, it's like the thing with the student loans. It Wouldn't it be nice if they forgave student loans? Dot, you know, like, wouldn't everybody be happy? But it's like, but what about me? I paid my student loans off for 20 years. And it's yeah. like, yeah. So it would comprom. So you're happy. <laughs> you know, like you're happier. You're happiest with everybody going through that same sort of torture. That is, I don't believe that's your bliss. Yeah, the the, the, the student lo- the student loan conversation has come up a couple of times. Funny. Oh, really? This book. Yeah, because yeah. it's. Uh, I think that that is a perfect example of wanting to imagine a perfect world and then and then like resentment getting caught up in that yeah right and then like and i and i feel like vacuum exemplifies the like no i i worked hard and i paid my loans right so like (laughs) why 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 should why should these people be forgiven and it's like and i and and i and i think that vacuum and i vacuum is a vacuum in the book because i i was thinking about if you were an object, what would be one of the most cutthroat industries to be an object in? Right. And vacuum cleaners are all efficiency, and they mm-hmm. live in the in a very competitive environment because there's do. always a, a a lighter, faster, more efficient vacuum cleaner out there, and you turn it to be on, and there's like ads saying like throw away your vacuum cleaner. This one's the vacuum cleaner you should have. And so like uh, <laughs> vacuum cleaners, vacuum is constantly trying to prove. <laughs> uh, worth. So then, when the system that they have succeeded in, despite a lot just being questioned, it's almost natural to be like, "Wait, what? No, that it's on you if you're not succeeding on this system, because right. it wasn't easy for me, and here I am." And it it's it's almost expected that someone would be insensitive to someone being like, well, I don't think this works for me because it's like, how dare you? I, I, it wasn't easy for me. Right. Uh, right. So, and, 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 and I thought that having that perspective and humanizing that perspective was important because that is, regardless of whether I like it or not, that is, that is something that, you know, kids will face. Right. And, absolutely. And vilifying it and, um, Throwing it by the west wayside, I, I do, as tempting as that is, and believe me, I, 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 I th- th- there are frustrating moments where I do find myself doing that, but it, it, it ultimately is to the disservice of the greater good. I think. Right, right, yeah. Vacuum represents a scarcity mindset, and when you do take the time mm-hmm. to consider, when you get beyond the ugh factor, when you do take the time to think about it, of course, that is relatable. You know, right. they, you know, feel the precarity of their success mm-hmm. and it's, it's real. So, okay. But everybody, everybody kind of, kind of gets there at the end of this book. Everybody, I'd say, I'd say it's a happy ending. Wouldn't you? Yes, I would say so. 
<laughs> so I have two questions that kind of um, are like munched together for me. Um, what was the writing process like for this book? And also, does a children's book resemble a comedy sketch, like structurally or when you're piecing it together at all? Well, yeah, it makes sense that those questions are are together because uh, I the way that I approached it was in many ways no different than I would writing a, a comedy sketch. It oh. was, I, I think that the, um, the manuscript for it read like a script and mm -hmm. it was, uh, to the point where there were almost like camera directions, uh, yeah. and zooms and pants and close ups, uh, and I thought about it as dialogue like 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 film dialogue and um uh and it's it really i think it's it plays with the idea of book as well as an almost audiovisual uh medium and i i i was also very informed in terms of the layout by memes yeah and how memes are very efficient at communicating humor just yeah. by the placement of the text yes and yeah, and 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 I, and I and I thought that was a very exciting thing to do with a to do with a book, to I, have the format bend to the to the needs of the the story rather rather than the other way around. I absolutely love that, and yes, like that. Yes, this answer sings for me. That's so funny. Part of my courtship with my girlfriend was we started memeing one another's baby pictures. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I was like, this is <laughs> I was like, this is how yeah. I know, like what the bat mitzvah photo is my absolute favorite. But like, I was like, this is how I know that this is the real deal. So be yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, be that as it may, I oh, you've been so generous with your time with me, and I see that we may have time for one more question if you're game. Yes, go for it, please. So I'll just get uh, this is my my tried and true all time classic most hospitable question, which is: Is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know about about I want to be a vase or um, any other stray thought flying around at the end of our conversation you'd like to share? Well, I, I I really hope that the book becomes uh, a cherished object in itself, not just uh, because of the story it contains, but because I do think it's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, I like growing up. My my favorite books as a little kid were my parents' coffee table books. Oh yeah, and, and flipping through art books and like staying on every page and contemplating that. And I, yeah, I I I, I really invite for that to like. Take your time with the book and uh yeah, I, I I hope it becomes one of those objects in the house. I I think it will. It will for me. And I thank you so much for the joy of speaking with you today and the joy of reading this book. Julio, thank you for joining me today on Fully Booked. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> <laughs>